Good morning, family. How are we doing this morning? Ooh, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. I said, how are we doing this morning? How many know today is a good day? Amen. Today is a day that we've been waiting for. Today is a day that we are expectant. And I just encourage you this morning, let's give God the best that we can give. God deserves the best that we can give. This is like Pastor Sean has been saying for a number of weeks yet. The best is yet to come. But we need to give God the best that we can give. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you that we can stand in your presence knowing that your name will be lifted high this morning. We give you all praise, glory, and honor. And we thank you, Father, for all that you are going to do. We receive it. We are expectant this morning. And we believe for it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Water. I won't go on, I won't drown. And when I'm in over my head, I know that you won't let me down. And when I'm broken and down to nothing, I know that you are always up.
something good, well, yes, I need. Can I have that one? Hallelujah. God is up to something good. And so, we're doing things a little different today. So, I'm going to ask you just to be seated for a couple of minutes. And uh, firstly, welcome to everybody who's here today. We're trusting God to do some incredible miracles. Amen. And, um, you know, since yesterday when I was in this auditorium praying, there was like this, this feeling of electricity, but it wasn't this raw, raw jump up and down. It was this compassion. And I believe God is looking at us with compassion. Jesus, when he went around and healed people, the Bible says that he had compassion on them. And so today, you know, I, I said to the worship team earlier when we were praying, I said I felt a little weird sitting on these steps just crying my eyes out yesterday. But I can feel the same thing right now. You know, and don't be afraid of what God is doing. Don't be a spectator. Tap into what God is doing so that you can receive your miracle. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 3, from verses 13 to 15, it says this in the Amplified. Now Elisha said to the king of Israel, What business do you have with me? Go to the prophets of your wicked father Ahab and to the prophets of your pagan mother Jezebel. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to be handed over to Moab. And listen to what Elisha says. He says, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, were it not that I have regard for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you, king of Israel. Now bring me a musician. And it came about while the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. The title of what I want you to hear today is Praise Precedes Miracles. I know we get so used to coming in and singing three songs and sitting down then expecting the pastor to wave his magic wand and make things happen. No. Praise precedes miracles. What happened here is Elisha was setting the stage for a miracle. He said to the king of Israel, if it was not for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, what is Judah? Praise. He said, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't even give you regard. And then he says, call a musician. He didn't just call anybody. He called a musician to come and set the stage. And if you read on, it says, and then the word of the Lord came to Elisha. You want God's word to come to you? Then you get down and you worship him. You take the time to give him glory and honor and praise. You know, there's no miracle that anybody can do. Only God can do miracles. But we need to set the stage for God to move. Because so often we come in and we're so caught up with what happened this week or what happened on the way here or the problem that we're facing that it, we don't even tap into what God has for us. Today, don't let that be you. Tap in. You know, you get hooked into worship today like never before so that God can do what He needs to do in your life. You getting tapped into worship not going to be for me. When I come to God and I get, 
I bring my heart before Him. I'm bringing it before Him for me. You get hooked in. You know, there's an atmosphere that has been building, but an atmosphere for miracles starts when we open our mouths and we give praise to God. You know, Paul and Silas were in the pit. I mean, in the bottom of the prison, the worst of the worst place. And it didn't stop them singing praises to God. So it doesn't matter what our circumstances, we can still praise God. And you know what happened there. The prison doors opened up. <coughs> Jehoshaphat, God told him, put, put the musicians in front. Send them out front and the victory will be yours. The walls of Jericho came down when the people lifted up a shout and praised God. The walls were still up when they shouted. <coughs> you know, we need to realize that when we get together and worship like this, God moves. Many believers, although they love God, they still think praise is not for them. I remember when I, when I first got born again and I saw people jumping around and going, I was like, no, I'm, I'm a reserved person. That's not for me. Let me tell you this. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be clamorously foolish. You'll do things you never thought you would do. You'll cry like a baby. You see, sometimes we complain when other people get miracles and we don't. But maybe they just took the time to get before God. Maybe they just took the time to ask their father. And maybe they just took the time to glorify God. You see, the atmosphere changes when worship takes place. King Saul got angry and violent. And one of his servants says to him in 1 Samuel 16, says, let us find a good, musicians to, a good musician to play the harp whenever the tormenting spirit troubles you. He will play soothing music. Saul said, find me someone who plays well and bring him here. And here's the thing. Saul only looked for somebody who played well, but listen to what the servant says to him. One of Jesse's sons from Bethlehem is a talented harp player. Not only that, we have talented musicians and a worship team. But not only that, a brave warrior, a man of war, Someone who has good judgment. And the Lord is with him. More important than anything else. Even the devil knows that there's an atmosphere that can be activated through music. In Daniel chapter 3 verses 4 to 7, we hear when Nebuchadnezzar tells everybody that when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, the dulcimer, the bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you'll fall down and worship the golden image of the king. Even the enemy knows. 
The entire world knows that things change with music. You get in a lift and they play music to keep you calm. You go to the dentist rooms, they're playing calm music before you get into the chair. When you go to a restaurant, the fine, fancy restaurants play lovely classical music because they're selling you an experience. But you go to the restaurants like I go to, they play fast, up-tempo music so they can hurry you in, get your food, and hurry you out so they can get somebody else in your seat. The whole world knows. Even sports events today, they hire DJs, and the minute there's a lull in the action, it's filled with music. What are they doing? They are shifting the mood of the people. I want you to know today, God's going to visit our families. God's going to do miracles for our children and our children's children. God's going to do miracles for our loved ones. God's going to do miracles for our friends and our families. And if they don't set the stage for it, we can do it here right now. You can do it, mom. You can do it, dad. You can do it, brother, sister, auntie, uncle, husband, wife, neighbor. Everybody needs to praise the Lord. Come on, I want you to get to your feet right now. And I want you to lift your voices and glorify God. And you'll feel the atmosphere of faith coming. You can't make this up and you can't program it. This is the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. Cancer doesn't have the last word. Pain doesn't have the last word. Divorce doesn't have the last word. Lack doesn't have the last word. Jesus has the last word.
voice this morning. Come on. Sing right all you have.
had your children, you had your children, you are the same God, you are the same God, you answered prayers back then, and you will answer. today to ask God to do miracles and so I have all of our elders and pastors 
that are going to be praying. So if you guys just come forward, go to where I showed you to go to. And what we're going to do is we're going to trust God for miracles. different needs and no matter what your need is we have somebody that can pray for you and so I'm going to invite you I'll tell you who each of the people are and what they're going to be praying for if you want to you come forward and let them anoint you with oil and trust God for a miracle with you and so, right on the end there, we have Norbert and Megan. They're going to pray. If you have a lack and you need provision, they're going to pray for you. We have Keith and Kim over here. They're going to pray for people who have digestive and stomach issues. We have Colin and Yvonne over here. They're going to pray for those who might have cancers or growths. Pastor John and Karen are going to pray here for those that are dealing with depression, grief, mental health issues. We have Pastor Chris and Carol over here who are praying for those who need a breakthrough in relationships. We have Dion and Lisa Next up, they're praying for back issues, spinal issues, problem with your legs. And then right at the end there, we've got Tony and Vivian. If you need employment, they're going to be praying for you. And then at the back, we've got Pastor Jeremy. He's going to be praying for those who need help with their sight, hearing, and also pray for those who are standing in the gap for somebody else. So Pastor Jeremy and Matthew will be at the back there. I will be here. I'll be praying alongside everybody. But if you have a need, while the worship team continues, and you continue to worship, if you have a need, then you come. And just make a straight line in front of the people so we don't have chaos. And we will be praying for you. If that's you, while we worship now, you just come on down and we're ready to pray for you. Amen. Come on down. You've been down long enough. No more walking in shame Cause the way that he loves you Isn't something you can change You've been running in circles But you can't hide from grace Cause the way that he loves you Isn't something you can change Just like Lazarus out of that grave our God rewrites history Jesus, you change everything When you pour your spirit out Just like Silas Singing with Paul Praise can break down prison walls Jesus, you can have it all Won't you pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out Pour your spirit out You can rest in His presence You can trust in His name Cause His burden is easy And He's perfect in His ways You can run to the fire There's no reason to wait Cause His arms have been open Yeah. 
Let's sing the word of God this morning. Come on. So we have to do is just ask, see, not much doors.
then come on, let's lift up a shout in this place. Father, we thank you for the miracles that have been done. You know, sometimes we just need to realize how much God loves us. That what God has started, God Himself will complete. He's begun things in people's lives today. And He will complete them. There's no if, but, or maybe about it. God has begun. God is working. And God will bring it to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's thank the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated for a couple of minutes. And I just want to say this. There's nothing better than God doing what only God can do. Because it's easy to try and manufacture stuff. But God, when He shows up, you know that He's there. Amen. And so, today I want to thank all of the pastors and elders for praying and all of those that assisted us. Because God has showed up, lives will never be the same again. Amen. And, uh, we're going to close the meeting in a minute. But before we do that, we're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. And I'm going to read from Leviticus chapter 7, verses 11 to 15. It says this. Now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which shall be presented to the Lord. If one offers it as a sacrificial meal of thanksgiving... It's the, that's the key, giving thanks. Then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving, you shall offer unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened wafers spread with oil. And it goes on in verse 14, it says this, that this offering to the Lord will be a peace offering. A thanks and peace offering. And then it goes on in verse 15 and it says, The sacrifice of thanksgiving presented as a peace offering shall be consumed on the day in which it has been offered and none of it shall remain until morning. Now I told you when we started our miracle series you cannot buy a miracle from God you cannot earn a miracle from God it is by God's grace but what you can do is give thanks to God with your offering and I told you that we're not doing this for the ministry so I'm going to ask Pastor Shane and Kate, just to stand up very quickly. They are from Household of Faith Ministries. And today, every cent in the offering will be going to that ministry. Because the scripture here tells us, it shall be eaten on the day in which it has been offered, and none of it shall remain until morning. None of that offering shall remain on these premises till tomorrow morning because we are making sure we're giving it to our soul of faith. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to take your tithe and your offering in your hand and we're going to pray and then the deacons will come and receive the tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you. We give thanks with our sacrifice right now. And we thank you, Lord, for that which you started that which you are doing and that which you will complete in the lives of your people 
in Jesus' name, amen. Deacons, please receive the tithes and offerings. While they do that, I have one very quick announcement. The ladies had their ladies' meeting yesterday, and they had a blast. Well, guess what? This coming Saturday, men, it's our turn. So come along on Saturday. We will be ready. We're going to have a great time together. 8 a.m. Come along. We have great fellowship, great word, incredible worship. And right at the end, we'll make sure that you go home with a full belly, full of goodness. Amen. And so Saturday morning, 8 a.m., do not miss out. We're trusting God to continue doing some incredible things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Won't you please stand? This is my scripture to speak over you today. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church in every generation through Jesus Christ, and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.